The universe is not static. It evolves all the time and grows in all directions. It's expanding, and scientists found this out almost a century ago. And it's not at a stable rate. The more time goes by, the faster the universe expands. As this happens, stars, planets, and galaxies move farther and farther apart, which leaves more space between them. If that's the case, the universe is supposed to become colder as it expands, right? After all, it was a lot denser when the Big Bang happened, and a lot hotter. As it was expanding, space was cooling down, which created conditions for planets, stars, and other space objects to form. Yeah, that's not exactly the case now. Scientists were surprised to hear it too, but our universe is actually getting hotter. They observed the temperature of cosmic gas farther away from our home planet compared to young gases closer to the Earth. Since we measure distance in space by light years, farther areas are like going back to the past, and regions closer to us are like observing the present day. They found out the temperature of a gas in space has gone up more than 10 times in the last 10 billion years. Now, the temperature of the cosmic gas that's spread all across the universe can get to around 4 million degrees Fahrenheit. Wow! As the universe expands, gravitational force does its part and pulls gas and dark matter together. It's doing some pretty hard work there. It creates galaxies and clusters of galaxies out of them. And this process is totally chaotic. It's so messy that more and more gas heats up as all of this is happening. Space was extremely hot when it was just forming, 13.7 billion years ago. What if it gets warm like that once again? Scientists are observing the situation. They found out the temperature in space increased by measuring cosmic gases using something called redshift. They generally use this method when they want to see how far away some space objects are. Those that are closer to us have shorter light wavelengths. The farther some object is, the longer its light wavelengths are. And they can now determine the temperature of a certain object from its light. On average, space is a pretty cold place. The glow that's left from the Big Bang is called the CMB, which is short for the Cosmic Microwave Background. It's so powerful and intense, it bathes the entire universe in light. It's the only thing that significantly heats up matter. But there are many smaller mechanisms that help to heat up matter in the universe. And they could go crazy if space warms up. Like stars. They emit radiation that affects nearby dust and gas. They radiate throughout the far infrared too. When a star is at its early stage, the radiation coming from it forms protoplanetary structures that look like disks. They primarily form in a single plane. And a bright central star produces spectacularly illuminated gas and there are blue reflections of this gas. It was like that with our planetary system too. Strong energy and gravitational forces cause collisions, dust, and gas in an uncontrolled vortex that's forming planets. That's why most planets in our solar system orbit in the same direction. That's the direction this giant whirlpool was spinning a long time ago too. Active stars, colliding galaxies, stellar cataclysms, black holes, neutron stars. The universe has so many sources of energy. And when you surround normal matter in space with such an energetic environment, it heats up drastically. When you heat something up, it radiates that energy away in a certain way. In most cases, galaxies have just a couple of areas where stars are forming, at regions where gas is collapsing. A bubble that surrounds that area contains ionized hydrogen. Three quarters of our sun is hydrogen. Thanks to that hydrogen, the sun keeps us warm. In its core, hydrogen transforms into helium and causes atomic fusion. Yep, that's how our sun releases its energy. Radiation heats all that gas to thousands and thousands of degrees. At the same time, it ionizes a large number of atoms and molecules which basically means it turns them into ions. Atoms are neutral particles, and ions are either negatively or positively charged particles. If the universe heats up, our sun might too. If its temperature hits 30,000 degrees Kelvin, it could become hot enough to ionize all those materials it had previously ejected, and it could create a real planetary nebula. This would be a nebula in the shape of a ring, that forms because of an expanding gas that surrounds an aging star. 
As the temperature goes up all the time, hydrogen ionizes. At a few thousand degrees, this could turn the nebulae in our solar system pink with emission lines. Our sun could come to its end if it reaches the temperature of 50,000 degrees Kelvin. If you could float in space and come closer, you'd see it glow in eerie green tones because of doubly ionized oxygen. Higher energy phenomena make more galaxies collide. This heats gas even more and eventually results in X-ray emissions. What about black holes and radiating neutron stars? When they go crazy, they can shape whole galaxies and who knows what more. Maybe we'd have more masers, too. Those are natural lasers our universe produces. They arise when big populations of molecules receive large amounts of energy. By now, scientists have found the strongest, yet the most distant, maser. So powerful, it's more luminous than the light 6,000 suns would produce, and in just one emission line. Maybe then we'd discover even stronger masers. That's in the case that we're even going to be here at all. Because as the universe is getting hotter, cosmic radiation is getting stronger. Not so good for life on Earth. Increased cosmic radiation could harm us. Who knows if life would even be possible on Earth in that case. Or if the powerful gravitational force would pull our home planet too and crash it into another one. But maybe life as we know it wouldn't completely disappear. Or if that happened, it could possibly somehow find its way once again, maybe in the distant future. There's a possibility our universe could support life at its early stages. Doesn't look like that when you think of the chaos the Big Bang caused, right? But that was only in its mere beginnings. After things had settled down a bit, the dregs of enormous, earliest stars formed rocky planets. In our solar system, those are Earth, Mars, Mercury, and Venus. You can't set your foot on the rest of them, since they're gas giants. Back in that time, radiation was quite intense, so rocky planets had an adequate environment to form. Since it takes a lot of energy to whirlpool dust and particles and bake a planet in the end. This period of time coincides roughly with that when the first stars formed in our universe. Ancient stars were way bigger than our sun. They lived shorter though. They would have just exploded as supernovas on their end and they would leave heavy metals across the space around them. Those are the particles rocky planets formed from. Radiation spread around the whole universe back then. It has changed over time. Today, it's almost an absolute zero. 400,000 years after the Big Bang, when hydrogen atoms were forming, CMB was almost as hot as the surface of our sun. And about 15 million years after the Big Bang, its temperature was close to room temperature, which is around 80 degrees Fahrenheit. These things were happening across the universe, so there were many planets that could potentially hold life. If we were one of those ancient worlds, we wouldn't need a star to keep us warm. CMB would be enough to do it. So it's possible that life in space is way older than we think it is. There could have been ancient worlds with liquid water on their surface, what if there were some primitive forms of organisms, like on our home planet, a long time ago? Or even more developed ones? Perhaps we'll find out one day. So, are you tired of boring old Earth? Want to know what lies beyond the starry night sky? You're not the only one. People have been asking the same question for centuries. Luckily, scientists have got you covered. They've discovered a lot of amazing places light years away from our blue planet. Just one light year is about 6 trillion miles. Mind-blowing, huh? So hop on, the spaceship of knowledge is lifting off. Your first stop is 2.5 billion light years away from Earth. It's a quasar, one of the brightest objects in the universe and the first one to be discovered. A quasar isn't a star, but a distant galaxy. This extremely bright object gets its power from a supermassive black hole. A disk of matter swirls around the black hole and creates friction. It's kind of like when you're cold and rub your hands together to stay warm. The friction between the palms creates heat, making you feel nice and cozy. The same happens in the quasar, just the amount of heat is bigger, way bigger. I hope you remember to pack sunscreen lotion. The temperature at the heart of this quasar can reach 18 trillion degrees Fahrenheit. Also, there is light, a lot of it. 
this celestial object shines a hundred times brighter than all the stars in its galaxy put together. Well, it's time to cool down a bit. Minus 457 degrees Fahrenheit, to be precise. This is the temperature of a young planetary nebula called the Boomerang Nebula. It sits 5,000 light-years away from Earth. NASA's Hubble telescope caught images of the formation in 1998. It's composed of gas coming from a star near the end of its life cycle. Inside the nebula, it's windier than in the Windy City. Winds reach speeds up to 310,000 miles per hour. And you gotta thank them for the nebula's chilling temperatures. Researchers were just impressed to find out that the temperature of the Boomerang Nebula is just 1 degree above absolute zero. Zero Kelvin should be the coldest temperature possible. This is the point where all molecular and atomic activity stops. Brr! Makes you want to crank up the thermostat in your spaceship. Next, you're going to a place you might not want to visit. Sorry. So it's the most massive black hole. This giant is located at the heart of a large galaxy some 10.4 billion light-years from our planet. Its mass is 66 billion times greater than that of the Sun, enough to make our galaxy's supermassive black hole feel ashamed. It has a mass of merely 4.5 million times that of the Sun. But you better not get near any of them, as a black hole's diet consists of matter. By calculating how much matter they consume, scientists can determine their rate of expansion. And those black holes have quite an appetite. Astronomers believe there are stupendously large black holes, or slabs, hiding somewhere in the universe. If they're real, their mass is estimated to be greater than 100 billion times that of the Sun. Now, it's time to snack on something lighter. The spaceship enters the Kepler-51 system. It's home to the lightest planets in the known universe, called superpuffs. Sounds fluffy enough, and it is. These planets' mass is either the same or slightly greater than that of Earth. But this doesn't mean they're small. Think of them as giant cotton candies the size of Jupiter. They are newly born planets whose atmosphere is still cooling down. You might want to wait for this process to be over, though, as 500 degrees Fahrenheit is too hot to handle. But for experts, super puffs are special. These planets are incredibly rare, as they've managed to discover less than 20 so far. Now, are you up for a race? Let's say the ship you're on is traveling at a speed of 25,000 miles per hour. This is the current human speed record. It was set by NASA's astronaut TRIO from the Apollo 10 mission in 1969. And no, I am not talking about Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. That was the Apollo 11 mission later that year. Right now, you're going to race against a star 18,000 light-years from Earth. Your biggest advantage is that this is a neutron star. It was formed when another massive star ran out of nuclear fuel and couldn't support itself anymore. Think of a car running on an empty tank. Victory couldn't be any closer, right? Well, not quite. When a massive star feels like its time is up, it shrinks and starts spinning. Figure skaters do the same during a spin. They fold in their arms to increase rotation to the maximum. This neutron star is the champion of the universe. It spins at a speed of 157 million miles per hour. That's roughly 27% of the speed of light. Whoa. Are you running low on energy at this point? Time to charge up from a gamma ray burst. Gamma rays are electromagnetic waves generated by various forms of radiation. These bursts were fairly unknown to science until the late 1960s. Satellites equipped with gamma-ray detectors accidentally recorded huge outbursts of radiation outside of our solar system. What were they? Nothing dark, definitely, as these are the most energetic forms of light. Scientists believe that gamma-ray bursts happen when two neutron stars collide and form a black hole. The other explanation is that they are in the final stage in the life of a supernova. This event happens when a star decides to go out with a bang. Gamma ray bursts shine brighter than a diamond. They are a million trillion times brighter than the sun. Talk about an energy boost. Ah, your mood is lightened up by now. You want to visit a place that has a draw to it. No, it's not a beach resort, but a magnetar. It's a neutron star with a twist. 
Magnetars have a magnetic field that is a trillion times stronger than that on our planet. But don't fall for their strong appeal. Let's just say you won't live to tell a tale if you get too close to one. In 2004, a flare that came off the surface of a magnetar managed to compress Earth's magnetic field from a distance of 50,000 light years. Quite impressive for a star the size of a city. Makes you wish to team up with this oversized magnet to commit the greatest heist ever. A magnetar has the ability to swipe all the credit cards on planet Earth from a distance halfway to the moon. Luckily for humans, NASA has discovered only 31 of these stars so far. You have barely escaped the pull of a magnetar. Suddenly, you start to sense a strange force drawing you away from your home base. It is the Great Attractor, one of the biggest mysteries of the universe. This massive gravitational irregularity has been pulling us closer and closer to it for billions of years. Scientists estimate that the Great Attractor is located at the center of the Linnea Kea supercluster. The name means immeasurable heaven in Hawaiian. It represents a gigantic collection of planets, stars, and asteroids. Our home galaxy, the Milky Way, is just a speck in this enormous supercluster. According to the Big Bang Theory, not the TV show, the real theory, the universe has been expanding in all directions. But the mysterious Great Attractor is slowing things down. How exactly? Researchers still need to figure this one out. On the bright side, they are good at naming things. The end of the universe would be called the Big Crunch, if there's anyone left to call it that. Your journey, too, ends at the edge of the universe. The most distant galaxy from Earth is the oldest one as well. The galaxies that form first after the Big Bang have drifted the furthest. So every time advanced telescopes detect a far, far away dot, they give scientists an image of the origins of the universe. Hey, ready to test your knowledge? Of course you are! You'll get one point for each correct answer. So, without further ado… The sun is yellow. Do you think this is a myth? Ask someone to draw a picture of the sun, and chances are you'll get a yellow or orange circle in the sky. Surprise! The sun is not really yellow. If you see it somewhere outside the Earth's atmosphere, it'll look white. How come? According to NASA, the sun's temperature is the reason why it's white. The sun consists of all colors mixed together, so it appears to our eyes as white. Then why do you think we see it as yellow or orange from Earth? Colored wavelengths, which are yellow and orange, are longer, and they are the only ones that make it to our eyes. The other short wavelength colors sprawl in the atmosphere, and the sky looks blue to us during the day for the same reason. Meteorites are hot as fire when they land on Earth. What do you think, myth or fact? When people see a fireball around a meteorite, they think it's super hot. Well, this is a myth. Meteorites don't immediately land on Earth. Most of them have been in space for billions of years. Space has a cold environment, just a few degrees above absolute zero cold, you know. But don't meteorites fall into the Earth in flames? How come? The fireball is actually the air in front of the meteorite. It is compressed by the super high speed of the meteorite. The outside catches fire, but that layer is burned off on impact as a result of landing on Earth. As you would probably guess, when they land, the meteorites are lukewarm at most, but not as hot as lava. One side of the moon is permanently in the dark. Do you think this is a myth or a fact? This is a myth. Oh, come on. First the sun and now the moon. Am I living a lie? <laughs> so people look at the sky and see only the bright side of the moon. The reality is the Earth shines equally on all sides of the moon as it rotates and orbits the Earth. Half of the moon is in shadow, and half gets sunshine similar to Earth. That's not true. Similar to Earth, it doesn't have a permanent dark side. The logic is simple. The moon orbits Earth, but it also rotates on its own axis. When you think about it, we're always looking at the same side of the moon. Black holes take in everything that comes their way. What is it? Myth or fact? 
Black holes don't have infinite mass and gravitational force. But still, no one really knows for sure what happens to the things pulled into them. Experts do know black holes do not have supergravity, though. Let's imagine this. If there was a black hole as big as the sun, it wouldn't immediately eat the whole planet. Imagine black holes as vacuum cleaners. It does draw in a cloud of dust near its range, but other specks of dust remain where they are. So even if there was a black hole replacing the sun, all the planets would continue to orbit similarly. They wouldn't go into the black hole. If a star or something else got into the range of the black hole, only then would its gravity affect the star. When you call someone, the signal bounces off a satellite. Is this a myth or a fact? Yep, it's a myth. Or rather, an urban legend or misconception, you name it. I mean, there are some satellite phones, but we, you know, regular people, don't use those every day. Although, your mobile phone works in a much different way. When you call someone, the nearest tower connects you to the other person online. This is why there are tower connections, huge networks of tower-to-tower connections, and hidden cables. The moon has no gravity. Any guesses? Myth or fact? This is an urban legend. Ask any astronaut you know. If you don't know any, just trust me. There is footage proving that the moon has gravity. When I say the moon has gravity, don't think it's similar to the gravity on Earth that makes the apple fall. The moon's gravity is only about one-sixth of Earth's. How does it feel to walk on the surface of the moon? The second man on the moon, Buzz Aldrin, mentioned it's like moving in slow motion and, quote, perhaps not too far from a trampoline, but without the springiness and instability, end quote. The sunset on Mars appears blue. Do you think this is a myth or a fact? This is a fact! Magnificent sunsets. The sky is filled with different shades of yellow. Now, imagine this in blue. According to NASA, sunsets on Mars would look bluish, watching them with bare eyes. It's because of dust. Dust particles closer to the sun appear in blue tones. There is something called moonquakes. Does it sound like a myth or a fact? It's a fact. Quakes happen on the moon too, and they're called moonquakes. They have different features, not really similar to the quakes on Earth, though. A planet can be hot enough to vaporize rocks. Any guesses? Is this a myth or a fact? This is a fact. The temperature in this universe is indeed very hot. There's a planet, the temperature of which is enough to melt and even vaporize rocks. It's two times bigger than the Earth. This super-Earth is similar to our planet, but it is way too hot. Experts believe that it possibly has oceans of lava and clouds that rain molten rock. One million Earths can fit inside the sun. Do you think this is a myth or a fact? This is a fact. Although the sun is one of more than 100 billion stars in the Milky Way, which is at the heart of our solar system, it can fit one million Earths. Yeah, it looks small when we see it from here. But it's only because it's so far away from Earth. All comets have tails. Myth or fact? It's true. Some comets simply don't show their tails. They look like someone threw a snowball into space. Space is completely silent. What do you say? Shh, I knew it was too easy. This is a fact. Space doesn't have an atmosphere, so there's no way to hear any sound there. Mercury is the hottest planet. Myth or fact? Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun, so this should be a fact, huh? No, not really. Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system and the second planet from the Sun. But the distance from the Sun isn't what defines the temperature. The heat depends on the atmosphere. So Venus's atmosphere consists mostly of carbon dioxide and some nitrogen. This combination makes the atmosphere very thick. When I say thick, I mean it. Throughout the year, the surface of Venus maintains a temperature of around 860 degrees Fahrenheit. Mercury's surface resembles the temperature of a desert, but is much higher in terms of temperature variations. Venus spins clockwise. What do you say? This is a fact. Venus spins in the opposite direction compared to many other planets. 
The Sun rises in the west, and its rotation is very slow. Venus needs 225 Earth days to complete its spinning around the Sun. The planet's distance from the Sun affects the duration of one rotation. It's too close to the Sun, and the Sun has a strong, noticeable pull on the planets. Footprints on the Moon can stay there for millions of years. Do you think this is a fact or a myth? Fact checked! The Moon has no atmosphere, so there's no wind blowing. And without the wind, there's no way to erase the footprints without any intervention. So, how many points did you get? Let me know in the comments! That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.